March 19th, St. Joseph, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary and patron of the Universal Church. St. Joseph was by birth of the royal family of David, but was living in humble obscurity as a carpenter when God raised him to the highest sanctity and fitted him to be the spouse of his virgin mother and foster father and guardian of the incarnate word. Joseph, says the Holy Scripture, was just a man. He was innocent and pure, as became the husband of Mary. He was gentle and tender, as one worthy to be named the father of Jesus. He was prudent and a lover of silence, as became the master of the holy house. Above all, he was faithful and obedient to the divine calls. His conversation was with angels rather than with men. When he learned that Mary bore within her womb the Lord of heaven, he feared to take her as his wife. But an angel bade him fear not, and all doubts were vanished. When Herod sought the life of the divine infant, an angel told Joseph in a dream to fly with the child and his mother into Egypt. Joseph at once arose and obeyed. This sudden, an unexpected flight must have exposed Joseph to many inconveniences and sufferings in so long a journey with a little babe and a tender virgin, the greater part of the way being through the deserts and among strangers. Yet he alleges no excuses, nor inquires at what time they were to return. St. Chrysostom observes that God treats thus all his servants, sending them frequent trials to clear their hearts from the rust of self-love, but intermixing seasons of consolation. Joseph, says he, is anxious on seeing the virgin with child. An angel removes that fear. He rejoices at the child's birth, but a great fear succeeds. The furious king seeks to destroy the child, and the whole city is in an uproar to take his life. This is followed by another joy, the adoration of the Magi. A new sorrow then arises. He is ordered to fly into a foreign unknown country without help or acquaintance. It is the opinion of the fathers that upon entering Egypt at the presence of the child Jesus, all the oracles of that superstitious country were struck dumb, and the statues of their gods trembled and in many places fell to the ground. The fathers also attribute to this holy visit the spiritual benediction poured on that country, which made it for many ages most fruitful in saints. After the death of King Herod, of which St. Joseph was informed in another vision, God ordered him to return with the child and his mother into the land of Israel, which our saint readily obeyed. But when he arrived in Judea, hearing that Archelaus had succeeded Herod in that part of the country, and apprehensive that he might be in Affected with his father's vices, he feared on that account to settle there, as he would otherwise probably have done for the education of the child. And therefore, being directed by God in another vision, he retired into the dominions of Herod Antipas in Galilee to his former habitation in Nazareth. St. Joseph, being a strict observer of the Mosaic law, in conformity to its direction, annually repaired to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Our Savior, now in the twelfth year of his age, accompanied his parents thither. Having performed the usual ceremonies of the feast, they were returning with many of their neighbors and acquaintances toward Galilee. And never doubting, but that Jesus was with some of the company, they traveled on for a whole day's journey before they discovered that he was not with them. But when night came on and they could hear no tidings of him among their kindred and acquaintances, they in the deepest affliction returned with the utmost speed to Jerusalem. After an anxious search of three days, they found him in the temple, discoursing with the learned doctors of the law, and asking them such questions as raised the admiration of all that heard him, and made them astonished at the ripeness of his understanding. Nor were his parents less surprised on this occasion. When his mother told him with what grief and earnestness that they had sought him, and asked, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I sought thee in great affliction of mind. She received for answer, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But though thus staying in the temple unknown to his parents, in all other things he was obedient to them, returning with them to Nazareth, and there living in all dutiful subjection to them. As no further mention is made of St. Joseph, he must have died before the marriage of Cana and the beginning of our divine Savior ministry. We cannot doubt that he had the happiness of Jesus and Mary attending at his death, praying by him, assisting and comforting him in his last moments. 
whence he is particularly invoked for the grace of a happy death and the spiritual presence of jesus in that hour saint joseph the shadow of the eternal father upon earth the protector of jesus in his home at nazareth and a lover of all children for the sake of the holy child should be the chosen guardian and patron of every true christian family 